brothers and sisters, today the topic of our meditation is getting God's approval. Hallelujah. Is there anyone, any person here who doesn't seek approval? Everyone seeks approval. I seek approval from my wife. She seeks approval from me. Knowingly or unknowingly, we expect approval. Right? From my manager, from my company, the appreciation. Nowadays, so the companies and all the corporates, they develop a culture of appreciation. We have a portal in our company where we appreciate each other, our team members. Last week, I got an appreciation from my uh, manager's manager. Okay, so I was very happy. Okay, I'm, I'm, I've, sir, I've worked in IT companies for more than 20, 22, 23 years. But still, my heart longs and enjoys an appreciation. Do you understand? I am a matured IT consultant, but my heart, my personality still seeks approval. Do you understand? We have not changed. In the beginning days when I joined a corporate multinational company, in the first six months they were so impressed, they gave me an award. They called it as a Bravo Award. And also, not only the money, but also the good words that the manager speaks upon you. So it's an approval in your heart. You seek approval. In the worship time, I was mentioning about Abel, the sacrifice of Abel and the sacrifice of Cain. You can see that when you are worshipping also, you are expecting approval. And God approved the sacrifice and the worship of Abel, whereas he rejected. He did not approve the worship of Cain. Do you understand? So, one is approved, one is rejected. So, many worships can happen in the church premises, in beautiful theatrical performances. Do you think just because it is so beautiful and appealing, they are approved and are accepted by the Lord? No. Do you understand how it is? So, according to Cain, he should have been satisfied with his fleshly thoughts. He should have been very, okay, I have also done my part. Okay, I am anyway huh? the firstborn of Adam. Mine is better. I am more senior. Huh? I am more intelligent. Who is this kid Abel? Do you understand? That superiority complex should have been there. But God doesn't look at whether you are a firstborn, secondborn, thirdborn, fourthborn. That is all not of great significance. God looks at your heart. Do you understand? So, even worship goes through an approval process. Right? Okay, now coming to the New Testament. Can you move to the next slide? Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 to 16. I am going to read something very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Very important. This is Paul's word. Be diligent, Timothy. Be diligent. Don't be a careless person. That's what it means. Concentrate on winning God's approval. To present yourself approved to God. That's what. Concentrate. What is being diligent, my dear brothers and sisters? To concentrate. To be careful. Do you understand? So, Timothy, no more carelessness, my son. My son, don't be careless anymore. I tell this to my daughters. When you are doing math, don't be careless. Do you understand? Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. See, again, approval is coming here. Even in the New Testament, you can go unapproved. You can get rejected. Your worship can be rejected. Your ministry can be rejected. Your faith journey can be rejected. Timothy, be careful. Be diligent. Concentrate. So that you get approval from God. Hallelujah. Be diligent to present yourself like able. I'm, I'm adding certain things so that I'm explaining things, okay? Uh, be diligent like Abel. Don't be like Cain. Be diligent. Be, con be very focused to present yourself approved to the Lord Jesus Christ. As a worker, a diligent person is also a worker who does not need to be ashamed accurately handling the word of God. So, when it comes to the doctrines of the scriptures, when it comes to the teaching of the word of God, when it comes to preaching, when it comes to healing, be accurate. Hallelujah. When you are exhibiting the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, fulfilling the purposes of 
your ministry be diligent be accurate while handling the truth word of truth but avoid when you are diligent you will start avoiding certain things do you understand you will not accept everything you will avoid sir what is that you avoid worldly and empty chatter for it will lead to further ungodliness ella veen pechigaliyum thavirpa and the talk will spread like gangrene disease very deadly disease dirty disease gangrene is a dirty disease among them are hymenius and philetus he names the people see paul was mercilessly identifying the people who are causing wrong doctrines do you understand don't be sympathetic to evil doctrines and to the evil people who are spreading doctrines do you know? learn from paul paul himself said imitate me hallelujah how many pastors in these days have the guts to do that have the guts to speak the truth pin point mistakes why is christendom being mocked because we don't have pastors with backbones simple we lost our backbone that's the reason people are mocking us you have to rise up to that standard to condemn such people do you understand your standard should be higher so how to be approved of god my dear brothers and sisters in this modern world how to get approval from god how to get your managers approval be diligent timothy be careful be focus and divide the word carefully that's why you are writing the scriptures and uh, this week only i found out that writing the scriptures is a kingly activity hallelujah hallelujah i found it out and as god is our king now <laughs> huh? so in the old testament deuteronomy it is written i sent that verse also in the group whatsapp group okay so when a king is ordained he will be given the torah how does the king develop the authority how does he get god's approval by looking at the torah and writing a copy for himself you understand there is so much of divine authority joshua what you have to do you want to be the second moses there is a secret let not the word go away from you you have to be with the word when you pronounce the torah pronounce the torah 40 lakh 50 lakh 60 lakh people will start listening to you leadership divine leadership do you understand every enemy will be bowing down before you joshua all power is given from the scriptures which gets instilled into your spirit and when you rise up and speak you will have divine authority over 40 lakh people do you understand huh okay so first of all first point to get god's approval is not to promote yourself but to renounce yourself everything is opposite in in the worldly life in earthly life you try to promote your case i'll write my career framework in such a way you know i did this i did that this challenge came i uh, uh, i solved this problem like this i used this particular way approach to solve okay i'm promoting myself and if my manager approves and he'll grade me but here jesus is a very very different leader jesus saying in chapter 16 matthew chapter 16 verse 24 to 26 then jesus said to his disciples that is you and me you and i are disciples if anyone wants to come after me to get my approval okay i'm using it for my message topic if anyone wants to get my approval he must deny himself hallelujah deny yourself and get approval deny yourself renounce yourself take up your cross take up new burden the cross was not upon your shoulder all this time my child now 
take up the burden of the Lord. All this time you are free. Your shoulders were free. Now, take up a burden. Renounce yourself. You will get the approval. Hallelujah. This is a New Testament. This is divine. Not to put the cross upon another person and show that you are a leader. Stop that nonsense. That is not New Testament. Do you understand? A New Testament leader is not a person who puts crosses upon others. He takes up the cross. Disciple, take up your cross. Take up your cross. Deny yourself and follow Jesus. Deny yourself the things you think you want. Then you will become the disciple. You will be approved. You must pick up your cross and follow Jesus. So, for whoever wants to save his life, must lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Hallelujah. So you are, everyone has a natural longing to hold on to their life. Right? Natural. Even in the hospitals, ICU, every patient is trying their best to hold on to that life, not to give up. Right? That is natural. Am I right? Even the doctors will sometimes be stunned by certain patients who are not giving up their last breath for months together. Because the natural way is to hold on to the breath. Now Jesus is saying, give up. Lose your life. Then you will gain it. It's all opposite. Jesus' teaching was the toughest teaching. You should understand. Not, do you understand? Jesus' teaching was the toughest. But today's Christians want to think Jesus just love. Love is Jesus, Jesus love. Beyond that, you ask anything about the, the Lord Jesus, not, nothing, no, zero. No information about teaching of Jesus. But Jesus was the toughest rabbi. Those who went through rabbinical, rabbinical studies in those days couldn't tolerate the teachings of Jesus Christ. In Capernaum, Jesus turned to his disciples, are you also going to leave me? Do you understand? The Capernaum Rabbi rabbis couldn't teach such a tough teaching, but Jesus was able to teach. But nowadays Christians are thinking Jesus is love, love is Jesus. I'm just telling you everything that Jesus said. A person, for the, what good will it do a person if he gains the whole world? but forfeits his soul. Or what will a person give in exchange for a soul? So Jesus is talking about eternity. If you want to be approved of God, be eternity focused. Be your soul focused, where you are going to spend your eternity. That is a person God approves. Simple. Do you understand? I am making it simple for you, for you to understand. Very, very simple. Not for temporary gains. Temporary gains if a person is living for and for daily show off before others. Who is a superstar? Who shows off? Right? Basically who are they? Our cinema heroes who show off. Who pretend as if nothing is beyond their reach. They can do anything. They are fit for hell. They are not disciples of Jesus Christ. Simple. I am talking in our own Tamil uh, Indian terms though, so that we will understand. Because we are all huh, contaminated by that industry, right? But, so I am trying to speak in that. So, the, what the world is dictating is not approved by God. You have to turn against it. When Billy Graham was very young and he was a very powerful preacher, even as a young days, he was screaming more than me, I am better. Okay? He used to preach very, very powerful sermons. Young man, lean, young, tall man, preaching like anything. His friends were amazed. But one of his friends said, You know, Billy, Bible is not correct everywhere. There are philosophical mistakes there. Some verses say here that, uh, that, 
is not coinciding with the other verses here. You know, there are so many gaps. No. So, the human, the intelligence comes into the play. So, in all these discussions, Billy Graham was very, very, very you know, in a situation where he couldn't answer. His faith is now became, has become a doubt. His friend's name was Chuck. Okay? And what Chuck was saying was very humanly, very intelligent. Okay? He was not a fool. His justification, reasoning or not was very intelligent for those days. So, Billy Graham, you know, he was losing his anointing. The power to stand before people and convince, with convincing power, he couldn't stand before the people because his, his thoughts were disturbed by the doubts that his friends were pouring into him. He, he took his Bible one day to the woods, to the forest area. He knelt down. He started stuttering and crying out, Lord, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't have proper answers for my friends. I, I understand their genuine points that they, are, that they are raising. Please help me. And he was crying. And the presence of the Holy Spirit came upon him. And then in the presence of the Holy Spirit, he said, said Whether I understand the scriptures now or not, I know that it is an infallible word of God. Divinely breathed. God has breathed this word. It cannot go wrong. I will rise up and speak this truth to this generation. I will not falter. Let the world judge it. Judge me in a different way. But I will stay true to this word. Do you understand? The commitment, the anointing, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the tears, that made Billy Graham the most powerful preacher. Not just because he was able to reason everything, not because he was able to answer every question that the earth throws against us. No. My dear brothers and sisters, take up the cross. That you will be rejected by your own friends. You will be mocked by your own friends for the sake of your faith. There are answers that can, there are questions that we may not be able to answer this generation. Even I sometimes get puzzled by people's problems. With all our might, our faith, we have to take up this cross. We have to preach the gospel. Deny yourself. Deny your pride and your prejudice. Deny your status. Whatever you think about me, you think about your, me. I don't bother about it. The Lord has graciously visited us. For eternity we will rise up and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Do you understand what is? Deny yourself. Deny your pride, prejudice. Who cares? The 70 or 80 years what you consider is nothing. I am secured for eternity. Hallelujah. Freed from condemnation. The person who gets approved is a freed man. Every sermon I ensure that I am freeing up. I am delivering, giving liberty through the word of God. Last week I was talking about how to be spiritual. How not to be in bondage. Even in spiritual things you can be in bondage. Okay, in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 4, Paul is saying, Therefore, there is now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. You are approved in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is no if and but. You are already approved. Hallelujah. You are already in Abel. Hallelujah. You are not a king. Your worship is approved. You are no condemnation for all those who are in Christ Jesus. In the anointed one. Christ means anointed one. The liberating king. Because when you are in Christ, a new law, the new covenant takes place. You are not in the days of Moses. Old Testament covenant. We are not in. We are in the new covenant. New Moses. Jesus Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness 
of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin he condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit so what does it mean so the old testament law moses through moses that was that was given was just a bandaid upon cancer will a bandaid heal the cancer no it has to be healed from within this at a cell level right that is new covenant healing the old testament is a bandaid that is why the gospel of jesus christ has to be has to be preached even to the jewish people don't think jewish people are all they are all abrahamic children oh wonderful they are if that was so why did peter had to die why was jesus crucified because he spoke to the jewish people the gospel of jesus christ if the jewish people are above the gospel of jesus christ there was no need for these wonderful apostles to die for them the gospel of jesus christ is first to the jew and then to the gentiles so what in romans chapter 8 was 1 to 4 what paul is saying is even though we have nothing good in us still don't think god is because there is nothing good in us don't think god is not going to approve whatever we do don't have such a opinion because so because people how can a holy god the most purest one who is who has no sin in him how can he accept our weak ha huh, offerings and we are all living in sin okay like isaiah i i am a sinner and i live with sinners so how can my sacrifices my love be acceptable to the holy don't think like that because there is no condemnation in christ because of the indwelling holy spirit the new covenant has installed within you the holy spirit himself which becomes a pleasure to god you are accepted because of the divine holy spirit even in the trinity the holy spirit is treated very very uh, sensitively you can talk anything about the father you can talk anything about the son you will be forgiven if you ever talk about the holy spirit no forgiveness the trinity is saying that holy spirit is indwelling in you with that holy spirit you are worshiping him with that holy spirit only i am serving god so i am accepted do you understand what i am saying not because i am great i am still a mud before my salvation i was a mud after my salvation also i am a mud but there is something pure that i am having post salvation that is the indwelling of the holy spirit i am accepted there is no condemnation because i have received the holy spirit now do you understand why important that i am giving to the holy spirit not just to make you blab or something it is very important as much as you want you have to go for it brother is this enough that is not the question there is no limit there is no limit to the holy spirit if if you have a better anointing higher anointing well and good you are secure no condemnation since the indwelly holy spirit fulfills the righteousness of the law so jesus said i am not come here to break the law of god the old testament moses covenant i have come here to fulfill it nerevetru mudikiran vande fulfilling come bringing it to completion by bringing the power of the holy spirit by bringing the indwelling of the holy spirit you understand so my the law cannot condemn me it has law the law has lost its power over me because i am in the new covenant do you understand Paul's see very technical but see one thing you should understand even though these are very difficult to understand please listen to it this is a bible college as well every church should be a bible college you should be taught with the word of god whether you understand it fully or not it's okay you have to hear these holy words hallelujah law cannot condemn you and me 
because we are dead to the law. If we are dead to the law, Old Testament law, we are into the new covenant, the spirit of life. God will not condemn us for the Holy Spirit enables the believer to walk in the Holy Spirit and thereby we are meeting God's holy demands. That is a demand of God upon you and me. Understand? The demand of God is fulfilled by the indwelling Holy Spirit. Do you understand why the Holy Spirit is residing in you? When you are weak, He groans. When you don't know how to pray, He groans for you. When you are going to sleep without praying, who is praying for you? Holy Spirit is praying for you. Forgive this guy. This day, Father, be merciful. Do you understand what is happening? The holy demands of God, the purest God, is fulfilled by the indwelling Holy Spirit within me. I am dead to the Old Testament law. Now I am into the new covenant where the Holy Spirit is pleading mercy for me and I am protected. And the indwelling Holy Spirit not only fulfills the demands of God, but He is pleasing to God. Hallelujah. God, when He looks at me, He admires me. Because, not because I am so beautiful, because the Holy Spirit is in me. He starts admiring me. Do you understand what, what Paul is trying to say? So, my dear children, my dear New Covenant people, my dear New Testament believers, don't feel condemned. You are approved by God. Hallelujah. Your sacrifices are able, better than Abel's sacrifice. Your sacrifices are better than Abel. Your sacrifices are better than Abraham's sacrifices. Because Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, there is a day coming when people all across the globe will be worshipping me in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. That category we are. The topmost category. Not those people who bring buffaloes and cows and goats as sacrifices. Do you understand? Did you bring a goat today? We eat mutton biryani, but we don't bring goats for sacrifice here. Why? Because we are all new covenant. Because of the indwelling Holy Spirit, our worship is accepted. Hallelujah. You understand? We are already, whether you accept, whether you understand or not, you are already in the new covenant worship only. Okay? Otherwise, you should have come, brought at least two doves. Now, everyone have come empty handed only. No animals. Because you are all in new covenant. Hallelujah. So, Jesus entered the mess and and helped the struggling humanity to, to set it in order once for all. Hallelujah. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 it says, Paul is again saying, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. So why did Jesus come to serve us? To set us free. Therefore keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. So stand strong for our liberty and our freedom in Christ. Because Christ has freed us all. That we won't spend even one more day under the yoke of slavery. Not even one day of slavery you should be in. That is why Christ came. That is why he became the sacrifice. That not even one day you have to be in the yoke of slavery. Do you understand? Yesu Jeeva Bariyana. Hallelujah. Not even one day, not even by mistake, you should carry any yoke. That is how particular Jesus was. Okay? So now, third point, free. Who is a person who is approved? How do you know that you are approved of God? In Psalms chapter 16 verse 11 it says, You will make known to me the way of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand, there are pleasures forever. Hallelujah. An approved person is a joyful person. Your spirit will confirm that. Even in spiritual churches, if they are very sad, 
coming with sadness, going with sadness, worshipping with sadness, crying with sadness, hearing the word of God with sadness, that is a yoke. In, if you are approved, if your worship is approved, if your life is approved of God, there will be a signal, there will be a sign in you that you will be in fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Are you happy? Are you joyful in Christ? That is a signal that you are approved of God. So you don't ask anyone else to know whether you are approved of God. Your spirit will confirm if there is a deep sadness in you. Go and check yourself. Alone with God. Ask him, why am I sad Lord? Have you not approved me? Is my life not approved? Is the Holy Spirit not indwelling in me? Don't you see the Holy Spirit in me? Then why is my spirit sad? Ask yourself. See what the Lord is going to say. Because the signal, the Bible says that there are pleasures forevermore. That's a never-ending happiness. Even in China, Christians will be happy in the midst of persecution. Why? Because there's an indwelling Holy Spirit who gives them joy. Hallelujah.